Let's go to Congressman Mike Johnson. Congressman Johnson, how you doing, sir? Hey, buddy, I'm doing good. Let me say, J&J &J Exterminating also has the most memorable jingle on the radio. They got that Louis Armstrong voice. You can't, it, that, that song is in my head all the time, all the time. They're doing a great job. No, no doubt about it. As a matter of fact, we just had one of your endorsed candidates on right before I got you, Doty Horton, who's running for a representative and uh, needs to be reelected. I appreciate that endorsement, Mike. Well, we got to stand with our conservatives. You know, they took tough votes. We all asked them to do it and prayed for them that they could take the stand. And, and Doty has. She's been consistent. She deserves to be reelected. Yeah. Uh, Mike, let's talk about what's going on in Washington a little bit. And the big thing is the budget. And I was reading this morning, it looked like they made a deal. I want you to explain to us because, Mike, one day this is going to explode, implode on us and really hurt the country. We keep spending the money. But in your words, tell me what's going on, what deal was cut, and when do we stop doing this, I guess, is going to be my big question. Well, those are very important questions. Um, we had a very, uh, I think, important uh, meeting this morning at the House Republican Conference. And by the way, let me say at the outset, Steve Scalise was back. Our leader was back, and he had a mask on for part of it because he's under the, doing cancer treatment, but he gave us a great report on the status of that. And he got a standing ovation among all the House Republicans for just being as tough as he is. So keep the prayers going for Steve. But um, that kind of helped yep. set the tone for the meeting, Moon. And, and we got the, the, the room together. Uh, I feel like we have good momentum. You know, everybody's seen the fight about the, the CR, the nasty word, the continuing resolution. And I hate CRs, all conservatives do. Because what that means is, to put it in layman's terms, it's like a stopgap funding measure when Congress doesn't get its job done. Now, I'm, on, I'm in my seventh year in Congress, my fourth term. And since I arrived here, and, and in years prior to that, you know, for 15, 18 years or something, Congress has not worked the way it's supposed to in terms of handling the government's budget and spending. You know, you're supposed to do, Congress is supposed to do 12 separate appropriations bills. So when we had the tumultuous race, you know, when Kevin McCarthy got the gavel to be the speaker, the, the, the commitment he made to all House conservatives was we would get back to regular order and do that job. And for lots of reasons that it would take us hours to unpack, it just hasn't been done until this moment. So now we're at the cliff. September 30th is the deadline. And everybody's working in good faith because we want to pass spending bills that reflect the urgency of the moment. As you noted, Moon, we have a $33 trillion federal debt. In fact, on Friday, the numbers were revised for this fiscal year alone. Just think of this. We are now $2.21 trillion in the hole and deficit spending, meaning that the federal government is spending over $2 trillion more than we take in. We cannot sustain that. We cannot continue on that trajectory. We're going to destroy the country. And so what we are desiring is not a government shutdown, but a change in the way Washington works. And I'm, I'm increasingly confident we may be able to affect that change. But Mike, Mike Johnson, Congressman Mike Johnson, our special guest, Mike is one of the, in the leadership position. But Mike, let me, uh, it's not so much devil's advocate, it's just, when does it stop? When, do, you know, you mentioned us not having a budget, that goes back to Barack Obama. Nothing surprises me about Barack Obama, okay? But when do we stop spending money and, and, and forget two trillion we ought to not spend in two dollars more we are so overspent when this listen me and you and i'm a little older than you we've never went through a great depression i have gone through some tough recessions you have too but never a great depression i don't want to live through that it is no way for us to keep borrowing money and spending money and printing money whatever you want to call it and ever get us back in any any kind of sanity at all so my question is, I understand everything you said, and we're living in the moment for now, but I'm worried about the future. And I'm sure you are, too. you got kids. But, Mike, when does – and I know you got to win the Senate. you got to win the and, – and I hear that, but when do we stop this? Because there were Democrats on that side. They don't want nothing to do with less spending. Nothing. No, that's exactly right. They want to add more spending. And, in fact, the numbers are glaring. House Democrats have added $10 trillion in debt over the next decade in just two years of control. When Pelosi had the House before we got the gavels back, 
uh, she, that's what they did. And so that, that's a reflection of their priorities. The problem is we can't afford any of that. Now, we're, 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 we're having some key fights. In fact, we were on the House floor until 1.25 a.m. last night voting on amendments to cut spending, cut spending, cut spending. I mean, we took a series of amendments. Um, and, but we were only able to get 50 or 60 votes of conservatives to cut the spending. Now, we're going to keep fighting for that, and we have to. But here's the real point. All, the, all these fights, and as, as difficult as they are and as uh, fantastical as they are, they're played out in the media, okay? We're really just only dealing with a small tip of the iceberg because we're arguing over uh, millions and billions of dollars in discretionary spending, okay? The, the major drivers of the federal debt, everybody has to understand, are the, the largest spending programs are the entitlements, you know? Medicare, I mean, we're borrowing... Seventy-five uh, percent of our borrowing this year and this fiscal year is to continue to fund Medicare in its current uh, situation. And so, you you have to have adults in the room, Republicans and Democrats, who understand that we cannot allow Social Security and Medicare, for example, to go bankrupt. And there we're within a window now of eight or nine years of that happening. We cannot kick the can down the road any further. There need to be serious, substantive conversations about this. We got to preserve those programs, but to do it. We have to make adjustments in our priorities on other spending. Yeah, Mike Johnson, Congressman Mike Johnson, my special guest. Mike, uh, when you when you look at uh, the stopgap provision, uh, I'm reading 45 more days. Is it, what's the difference if you do it now? You do 45 days, and we get back to the same situation because people in the public, the average person, they only say, "Well, the government's going to shut down." Uh, that don't bother me, but it bothers a lot of people if the government was to shut down. And I don't think that ever happened. But, you know, one day we're going to be forced to shut down because there's going to be no more money. Uh, whoever's buying our debt, the day they say we're not buying anymore, where do we go? What happens then? Well, the great question. What happens when you, yeah, you can't sell it anymore? Yeah, right, because what we're doing is we're devaluing the dollar, and we're all of this this uh, unrest and, and this uh, bad money management is leading us into a moment where we may lose the, lose the dollar as the world's reserve currency. That's the greatest threat to the entire world order, and certainly to us here, because we will not be able to borrow to take care of our obligations if that ever happens. So we have to prevent all that. I do think we're making positive momentum. You asked a really important procedural question. What's the point of a CR or something that looks like it, a stopgap funding measure, if you're just gonna go 45 days and do the same thing? The, the, what developed out of our meeting this morning, I'm talking about our, our family meeting among House Republicans is, instead of a 45 day, maybe we ought to look at doing a five day or a seven day. And the reason that that's significant is, it's an actual show of good faith. The only reason we would need a few more days is to get the remaining 12, you know, of all the 12 appropriations bills, to get the remaining bills done and lobbed over to the Senate with our uh, funding priorities, our conservative cuts, our responsible cuts. That's really important to put us in a negotiating position with the Senate and the White House when we get to the final numbers for next fiscal year. That's what all this is about. I think we may be able to do that, but it's going to take some heavy lifting over the next 24, 36 hours. Do you, uh, how, how hard is it to do with, uh, you know, uh, uh, the boss man, the Speaker of the House right now, you know, you got some people upset and they'd like to get rid of him and all that stuff. So how hard is it to do it? Because you're kind of in a hostile environment in the fact that a lot of conservatives don't trust him. And then you got the Democrats on the other side licking their chops. And then you got a Senate that's, le that's led by a guy that must wear a thong, Schumer, because I've never seen him smile. And the Senate is not going to go along with anything y'all try to do. Yeah, that's right. That's the reality of what we're dealing with. And as one of my Navy SEAL colleagues and friends said this morning, we're in a low trust environment here on Capitol Hill. Yeah, that's an understatement, right? But the problem is if you don't have trust, then it's very, very difficult uh, to get these these heavy lifts done. And so we have a, a broad conference. I mean, remember, there are people in the, in the Republican conference like me um, and, and guys that are very conservative. And then there are some who are elected, for example, uh, on Long Island and New York and, and in, uh, you know, Oregon. I mean, we have members who are elected from districts as Republicans that President Biden won in the last presidential election by 10 or 12 or 15 points. And so they look at the world very differently than I do, right? They, they, they represent a different constituency. So what I have to do as a legislator and as a leader is recognize where they are, what their possibilities are, and try to get us together on as much as we can so that we can move the country forward. Ronald Reagan said, um, if somebody's with me 80% 80, 80 of the time, they're my friend. And I'd rather get 80% I want 
of what I want and go over the cliff with the flag waving. This, that's the moment we're in right now. So we're not going to have a perfect bill. We're not going to be able to reform all this overnight. It took us decades to get here, but we're working and we're moving, uh, I think, in the right direction. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, just, I'm just concerned because I think we need a halt and because we got a pre-COVID budget and then we got a post-COVID budget. And the post-COVID budget right. is continuing to be way up. Well, if you go back to pre-COVID budget, it's not even close to what we're spending now. Seems like we could have been able to ease back on that side. And I know the Democrats are a problem because they see nothing wrong with running the country. But sooner or later, Republicans are going to have to grow up and get the job done. They got to, or we won't get it done. That's exactly right. One of the proposals, just so you know, is to form a debt commission where you have serious minded people with real sharp pencils who go over that budget and make proposals for the next year and the year after and the year after on how to carve this thing up. We've got to limit the size and scope of government and reduce the spending or we are going to crash the economy. That's the bottom line. Yeah, no doubt. All right. Congressman Mike Johnson. Mike, we'll do it again. Thank you. God bless and good luck to you.